Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. We're back in Orlando, Florida. This is day two of Pentaho World, the second Pentaho World, and this is The Cube, SiliconANGLE Wikibon's flagship program. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, Quentin Gallivan is here, is the CEO of Pentaho. Quentin, great keynote yesterday. You must be excited, high energy. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. I am, it's, it's, it's outstanding. Thank you for having us. You guys do a great job here. Thank you. you we, just, we I, really I love the fact that you're in the middle of it. You're in the buzz. We right? love being in the buzz. Yeah. You know? And um, you feel the energy. You know, it's, it was so interesting hearing the keynotes yesterday. Um, you guys have a lot of substance. You've been around for yeah. 11 years. Yep. About the same amount of time as Hadoop has been yeah, around. Right. So you weren't too early, and you weren't you know, too new, so you've had time to harden your platform, and I think it really showed in the keynotes yesterday. I wonder if you could talk about some of the shifts that you see in the marketplace, some of the things you talked about yesterday in your keynotes, and how Pentaho has really capitalized on, on that. Right, right, well it's really interesting, um, it's our second uh, users conference, customer conference, and very much the focus has been on around big data analytics, the Hadoop ecosystem, and really what's happening. And uh, last year, you know, we focused a lot on the technology. And what's the technology around the Hadoop ecosystem? What do the pieces fit? What do the reference architectures look like? And then this year, because we had such a strong adoption, we really focused on the business use cases around Hadoop. And we're really starting to see comp companies take advantage of the technology where there's a return on investment initiative that's going to drive a revenue advantage, a cost advantage or an operating advantage for, for customers. So you, the shift we've seen, really the kind of the macro view is the maturation of the Hadoop market. And so that's the theme of Pentaho World is putting big data to work. So as you saw in the keynotes, you know, a lot of discussions around internet of things. How are companies deploying it? How are they making money at it? 360 view of the customer. You know, big data analytics, how are companies getting intelligence about their customer in order to get closer to the customer to drive higher conversion rates on target offers and revenue. And so what I like about the theme, it's really the maturation, it's really all about the business advantages, which is very different uh, than a year ago. Well, the business, we value, technology. business value is critical. I mean, we've been studying this for years now, and a lot of companies, you know, there's some companies on the edge, obviously the Googles and the LinkedIn's and the big web guys, they're getting value from big data but there's the fat middle that's struggling. What I heard yesterday and from the customers that we interviewed is they're getting massive value. Uh, and the reason is you've actually put together an end-to-end -end pipeline. Right. They're not having to spend 70, 80% of their time figuring out how to make all this stuff work. That's a critical competitive advantage for you and it's unique in the industry. I wonder if you could talk mm. about that. Yeah, I think one of the big, uh, sort of unlocking the value of big data is that you know companies there was a, a focus before around primarily just what data can we put in Hadoop, unstructured data in Hadoop. And that's an important component, is being able to analyze this unstructured data. But what we've seen from the line of business trying to drive these 360 view of the customer initiatives or internet of things or fraud control and compliance is the need to blend that unstructured data with structured data or relational data data you already have in your systems about your customer, about the transactions, about all the ERP kind of activities. The key in unlocking it is blending the unstructured data, which is really what are the behavior patterns, what are people doing on clickstream, what are they doing around IOT devices, but blending that with the relational data, that's unlocking the insight. And so what Pentaho does, that end-to-end -end platform, it automates the process, it takes friction out of the process, and essentially allows companies to unlock the value so, of, of, of big data. George, and I know you want to jump in, I wanted to follow up on the whole IOT piece as it sure. relates to strategy. I know Richard had a go, so I'll ask you the strategy question. Chris said yesterday, strategy should not waver, should be consistent. Now that's not always the case, sometimes companies have to do massive pivots and change strategy. When you started the company, Pentaho started, started, there was no IOT, people weren't talking about IOT, right. and now you're, it's like right. this huge tailwind for you, the Hitachi acquisition, and we'll talk about that, but, so the strategy wasn't IOT, right. the strategy was around data, so I wonder if you could sort right. of summarize 
that strategy uh, because it's positioned you very well for some of the changes in the marketplace. Right, it's a great, great insight. I mean, we started out really, we had two themes uh, in the company and we have been around for 11 years that we've tried to be consistent to those themes. You know, one theme is that we truly believe commercial open source is a way to innovate faster, right? So that was one theme we had from the very beginning. The other theme we had is that for companies to get real insights, you have to marry the ability to integrate data from all different sources, blend that data, and then easily put that into an analytical tool. So that's been our theme for 11 years. What's changed is big data. So big data has made those themes more profound. It's made those themes more relevant in the sense that the traditional data sources are still important, but now this unstructured data becomes very, very critical. And so for us, it was easier to point the company with our themes at the bigger opportunity. Now, as it relates to big data, so what we've been doing is really putting together you know, an analytical platform that takes unstructured data, structured data, puts it into an analytical model, allows you to visualize it, that end-to-end -end pipeline. And so with big data, we've been trying to find is what are the business use cases? And so IoT has just become another business use case that's getting a lot of attention, it's getting a lot of traction, and it's getting all this attention because you've got traditional old line industrial companies that weren't really associated with technology innovation, right? They were associated with manufacturing innovation, supply chain management innovation, but now they're on the forefront of taking advantage of IOT as a way to transform these industrial businesses. For us, it just happened to be right place, right time, that we've been focusing on business use cases and IOT now becomes a very popular business use case. Lucky timing, sounds easy, but a lot of execution behind it. Yeah. Go ahead, George. So, uh, I'm listening to two things that are related. Mm -hmm. One, it sounds like um, when you can unlock value across data silos mm -hmm. and make it easy, you can, you can capture a lot of the value that, that customers are mm -hmm. unlocking. And sort of the, the rise of you know, big data in a separate repository was a key part of that. Mm -hmm. um, how does that, other than you know, Internet of Things data sort of coming from many different sources, how are you sort of positioned to take advantage of that? I mean, it comes in from so many more sources, it's continuously coming in. Um, how, do you, how do you work with that? Yeah, so there's a couple of uh, key trends emerging around IOT, because IOT is a whole different game in terms of instead of a, you know, usual business communications is even about a person communicating to a person or a person communicating to a business. Now you've got people and things and people and systems uh, connecting. Or things and things. And things okay. and things <laughs> connecting. And so from, from our perspective, we're seeing some couple, a couple of key technology trends happening. One is, the emergence of the cloud as a deployment model for big data, particularly around IoT. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, so why, why is the cloud emerging as a deployment model? Or the, the reason you mentioned is that when you're doing Internet of Things, you're basically capturing machine data from devices, from sensors. It could be 10,000 sensors, it could be millions of sensors on a global basis sitting in a customer premise, sitting in a home, sitting in a retail shop. By the very nature, because of the distributed environment where the things are generating data, it makes sense to put that infrastructure in a cloud, a cloud environment. And so that, the cloud thing is an important piece. And the other important piece around the Internet of Things is the ability to capture data coming in very, very fast, coming in short bursts from devices, and quickly move that into an analytical platform so that the analysis can basically capture the data and then review the health of that device. That's the main, the main event around IoT is what's the health of that device and things like predictive maintenance are use cases where companies want to get ahead of the device failing uh, in a customer's environment or on a, uh, a factory floor is they want to see based on the health of that device what the machine data is telling them do something about it, do be preemptive, take that device out, remediate that device. That predictive maintenance piece is one of the key use cases we see around IoT. Mm -hmm. So, my understanding then, listening to you, is you actually now 
have sort of pivoted like from the iPod to the iPhone into yet another super sweet spot that's actually bigger in the sense that, um, as you say, the, the, the Internet of Things sort of machine data is coming in continuously and very fast. Right. And so you need an end-to-end -end pipeline that doesn't get stuck handing off to different right. tools. That's one thing. Right. And then you're also, to some extent, hiding the um, information processing layer in the form right now of a Hadoop ecosystem that does all these handoffs, whereas you can sort of manage it at a, at a higher layer. So in other words, shorter pipeline, faster pipeline. Is that, is that sort of a core of your advantage with the Internet yes, of Things? Yes, yes, because you are seeing what's, what's happening with the Internet of Things is that it's moving away from a batch process of moving data to more real time, to more streaming of information uh, continuously coming in. And so with Pentaho, we do have an advantage around the scalability of our infrastructure, the innovations that we're working on today and working on tomorrow to really go from that batch data movement to a more streaming data environment because that's going to be very critical. Uh, and then also to your point is really take the complexity out of the process. I mean that's the value that we bring as we try to abstract the complexity uh, from the eyes of the customer and handle that end-to-end -end process in an automated fashion. So I want to bring in the, uh, <coughs> the Hitachi piece. You're talking about Internet of Things, obviously there's a clear Hitachi synergy there. Mm -hmm. Monday we saw Dell announce an acquisition, the largest acquisition in our industry's history of EMC, a company that yeah. HTS has been competing with for years. Interesting to note, HTS, Hitachi, going into finding ways to leverage Internet of Things, acquiring a software company like Pentaho, and you're seeing sort of these hardware companies consolidate. I wonder if you could talk about two things. One is, what do you make of that? And two, talk about the, the synergy with Hitachi and the IoT play. I want to dig into that a little bit. All right. Yeah, you know, one of the things that was you know, compelling for, for me as the CEO of, uh, of Pentaho to be acquired by Hitachi, you know, what was my strategic rationale? And really, the strategic rationale for us was we saw a very big opportunity in just doing what we were doing. It was a $40 billion opportunity, big data analytics. And we started to see IoT, this emerging use case, and we have many IoT customers that aren't Hitachi customers, right? We'll continue to, to build more. But we were kind of on the outside looking in of the IoT tent. And what we saw, uh, the opportunity with Hitachi is really to expand our ambition, expand the aperture, and be inside the tent in terms of where IOT is going. And what we liked about Hitachi's point of view is that if you think about Hitachi, you know, it's an $80 billion plus company, and it, a lot of industrial uh, businesses, but it's also a very large IT company. And so we thought that being part of one, a very large IT company, it's also a very large industrial company, you're going to have domain expertise um, bringing IoT together, and we wanted to be you know, in the middle of all that. And so that was part of the strategic rationale from my perspective. So that makes sense. I want to talk about the go-to-market. So when a, right. you're a small company, you, you struggle, you try to build up a distribution yes. channel, you hire salespeople, I mean, it's hard, you know? Yeah, yes. <clears throat> and you might have a slight advantage against the competition, and then you get bought by a big company, all of a sudden, distribution changes. So can you talk about the go-to-market and how Hitachi will bring the Pentaho innovations to its marketplace? Right, right, right. So and that was another strategic rationale for me, is that if you look at the market opportunity Pentaho was targeting, it's a big market opportunity, and a lot of that market opportunity is large enterprises deploying big data solutions and buying the technology. For a small company like Pentaho, you know, we had to really work scratch and claw to get into those large enterprises. The synergy value of Atachi Data Systems is they have a very large sales organization, they have a large customer base, existing contracts, really strong relationships. So for me it was really a way to catapult into getting in our solutions and getting part of these projects, leveraging the large Pentaho um, go-to-market capability. So that's sort of, that's sort of um, synergy value one. So synergy value two is that Hitachi has a lot of software IP around technology, around data management, 
Uh, one of the things that were very intriguing to us is that you know, predictive analytics is becoming a very important part of all these big data analytics use cases, not just IoT. At Pentaho, we have a predictive analytics capability and we have some data scientists. Pata uh, Hitachi's R&D has 500 data scientists and they're looking for problems to solve. So I looked at those 500 data scientists and, and all the Hitachi IP and said, that's something that can be super helpful for us going forward. So tell us, you know, Dave asked about sort of go to market. Let mm. me ask about sort of go to market V2, mm. which is when you start leveraging some of their internal IP, the data scientists, right. um, and data scientists sort of as this generation's professional services. How mm. does some, how do some of Hitachi's businesses change? And how does Hitachi sell to other industrial companies when they're sort of offering analytic data capabilities along with an industrial product? Right. So a couple ways that um, Hitachi's approaching the opportunity, and, and I'll talk about where we, we fit into that, that opportunity. So even if you look around here at the convention center and the expo booth, is Hitachi Data Systems has built big data analytical applications, right? Pentaho is more of an infrastructure end-to-end -end company, but someone needs to build applications on top of that, our, our technology. So if you go around the expo here, Hitachi Data Systems have built big data analytics for the telco industry in terms of uh, network traffic analysis. They've built big data analytics capabilities for IT in terms of machine analytics. They built big data analytics capabilities for smart cities. And so the Hitachi Data has already built um, a handful of really powerful big data analytics applications on, on Pentaho, Pentaho, on top of Pentaho. So we're going to continue to be a partner there, but we also, um, are, are, we also work with a lot of other companies that are building big data analytical applications. 40% of our business comes from partners, many of those in the rooms, many of those that you saw in the keynotes that build applications, big data analytical applications on top of the Pentaho platform. Just to be platform. clear, 40%, is it 40% of your partners build apps or 40% of your revenue comes from apps built by partners? Ladder. Wow. The ladder. That means you're one serious platform. Right. So then a follow on to that is, how do you think about capabilities that, are, that might belong in the platform, but that application developers put in now that you, know, you have to trade? Do you step on them or do you broaden the platform? Yeah, it's a great question. So it gets back to the earlier one you had about, so what, who are we? Yeah. You know, what are our themes, yeah. right? So our basic theme at Pentaho is commercial open source, end-to-end -end analytical platform, and be very extensible and be very about plugins. And so our heritage has always been about having other companies, partners, customers, build on top of the platform. And because of our commercial open source roots, we have a very much an extensible API oriented platform. You can build plugins. And that's been our, our community, the open source community, that's been where they've really spent a lot of time is building applications, building visualizations, building front ends, building back ends on the Pentaho platform. We're going to keep that heritage and that DNA um, so we allow companies like Hitachi to build applications on our platform and then you know, the rest of the marketplace. So we've talked a lot about some of the exciting things, IOT, and you're, uh, uh, let's close on sort of summarizing some of those things right. that it's excite you. You talked about telematics in your, mm -hmm. your keynote. Uh, you talked about O-Power, talked mm -hmm. about five billion devices, uh, uh, sorry, five billion people, 50 billion things connected. Uh, we talked about cloud. Summarize, Quentin, some of the things that are exciting you, your head of a technology company. What are some of the technology enablers that you see that are really exciting you guys? Right, so a couple things. One is, and again, it's, it's only been a year since we're seeing these dramatic changes and, and these Straight. shifts. It, it, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, but a couple things around big data that we think are really interesting, both technology and then shifts. So one is we do think use cases like IoT are here, they're real, it's very transformative. We do think big data is getting cloudy, right? And not just around IOT, but I know you had, you had FINRA on here, 
And so look what they're doing in terms of that's very serious, credible, big data stuff. I mean, they're basically monitoring the capital markets in the United States looking for fraud as a regulator, looking for insider trading. 75 billion events or trades every day they have to capture and quickly analyze and looking for bad behavior. That's serious stuff. And, so, and they're doing that in the cloud. They're doing that big data in the cloud. So we think IoT, big data in the cloud, and then there's all the cool stuff, or the innovation that's going on in, uh, in the big data space. All these commercial, all these open source activities like Spark, in terms of new trends, that's a pretty exciting uh, Apache project and you've got very fast processing in memory on large data sets that could be part of a platform. Things like Kafka, which is real-time streaming, message queues. So there's all these components that make sense in terms of taking big data to the next stage. What we're trying to do is that we want to be the heat shield for our customers around these components, meaning we take these new technologies in, we embed it into the platform, then we harden it. The exciting thing about these new technologies in open source is the innovation is, is dizzying. The challenge is that it's fairly immature and fairly command line kind of, kind of technology. So our job is to take those components in make our products faster, more real time, more scalable, more performant, and harden those. And I think that allows a company like Pentaho, whether pre-Hitachi or post-Hitachi, to innovate dramatically fast because we are an open source company and can take advantage of those technologies. Paul, you've made the open source angle work. It's very hard. It's obviously Red Hat, huge success, but yeah. there are a lot of companies struggling to do it. Why do you think Pentaho was able to be so successful with an open source strategy? Well, we've been at it for 11 years. So I think like anything else in business, time and experience, it allows you to, it allows us to really shift our focus from yes, we want to be a technology company, but we also, where's the business value for the customers? And so we've been very focused on keeping pace with innovation, but where do we add value from a business? And that's why we really focus on these use cases that, that I, I talk about around big data. I think the more that we can not only bring the technology but bring skills and expertise or um, cookbooks or blueprints around if a company wants to do IoT, we've got a reference architecture for you. If you want to do 360 view of your customer, we have a reference architecture. If you want to manage fraud from a big data standpoint, we have a reference architecture for you. So I think it's just a combination of technology plus business process skills and expertise. Well, it's been an amazing journey so far. It sounds like a lot of exciting things ahead. Um, you know, the timing has just been amazing to watch. Um, and, but you know, I've seen a lot of exits in this business. You guys aren't a lightweight BI tool or lightweight tool that an acquirer has to then harden. You guys have done a lot of hard work in doing that, um, that roadmap. We're going to have some other guests on later today to talk about that and drill into that. So Quentin, congratulations on all the success and uh, we'll be watching going forward. Look forward Great. to, to well, tracking you Thank you for you all your support. Thank you for coming here and uh, you sort of capture the energy of the moment here. It's really it's been great. our pleasure, so thanks again. Thank you. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be thanks. back thank with you. our next that guest. Right really after cool. This is theCUBE. We're live from Pentaho World in Orlando. Yeah. Right back. <laughs>